There was no need to dream of a white Christmas. It was on them yet again, the freezing survivors, with only one consolation to keep their spirits up. The enemy was freezing too. It was too cold to do anything but eat and sing carols, and listen to carols too from over the hill. The Duma pleaded for a truly national government, representative of all shades of opinion. The result of this was that those ministers who were in favor of such a move were summarily dismissed. Relatives and foreign diplomats pleaded with the Tsar to pay attention to what was happening and that there was a very real risk of revolution if the needs of the nation were not heeded. Uh, highly respectable people began to agitate, even to plot. General Krimov started talking about the need for a palace revolution as long ago as 1916, and even the highly successful and energetic General Brusilov seems to have been party to the conspiracy even when he was leading his troops at the front. But the revolution couldn't wait for the generals to make up their minds. They found other leaders hunger, and basic human needs. Several baker's shops were looted. The police concentrated their efforts on keeping the crowds out of the center of the city. But the milling mob turned ugly. They were joined by groups of students. And once students were involved, there were bound to be at least isolated threats against the autocracy. On the 10th of March, the public became bolder and they occupied several police stations. The Cossacks behaved with extraordinary equanimity and even befriended the strikers. The Tsar from his headquarters ordered the military governor to suppress the rising. Shots were exchanged, there were many dead. The news spread. There was a spontaneous, leaderless combustion the crowd were everywhere. It was a result of weariness, of hunger, and finally of enthusiasm.